to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow my foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. How many believe that? Amen. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. I thank God for that promise. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. I think we ought to thank God for that promise this morning. Yeah. Is that the best you can do? I think we ought to thank God for the promise of keeping us forevermore. That's everlasting. Unending. We don't have a concept or fuller concept of that yet, but he is promising that he will keep us forever. Second Kings chapter 6, 17. And Elisha prayed. Someone say he prayed. And he said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. Now, he was not blind, but he can't see the things in the spirit. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Those are angels. Would you pray right now, Father, I thank you. For what you've already done, Lord. And as you add, O oh God, to what you have done, Lord, that we might be full, O oh Lord, in our spirits, uh, that when we leave this place today, we may leave uh, with your assurance and a brand new set of eyes. Uh, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, somebody shout in Jesus' name. And may God bless you and be seated. Would you clap your hands as you're seated this morning to the Lord. How many want to look through the eyes of the Spirit? Amen. That we may be able to see and look through the eyes of the Spirit. See, the eyes are said to be the windows of the soul. When you look at somebody's eyes, you can tell a lot about what they're going through, a lot about their, their countenance and their, their spirit. And some can't look you straight in the eye if something's bothering them. And also, when somebody's cheerful, it, it, their eyes glow. It, it's bright. And, and we thank God for that expression. The importance of the eyes physically and symbolically are mentioned so many times in Scripture. There's five senses, and perhaps the eyes are the most important. Don't you agree? Yeah. You know, if you think about all your five senses, the sense of touch and hearing and taste, and all of that, that probably the last you'll give up is your eyesight. Right. That you could yeah. see. Maybe you would forego not being able to feel. Or not being able to taste. But not to be able to see greatly hampers us. And that's the physical sense. Uh, but there's, all, there's, there's also the symbolic spiritual sense of the eyes. That you could comprehend what God is doing is unseen. And the seeing is very sensitive, right? Because just your eyes are very sensitive. I mean, the sense of touch, you, can, you know, hit your arm and, and you can feel it, but you can absorb a little bit more. But, but your eyes, you, you can't hit it as much because it's, it's very sensitive. And we've got to protect the sensitivity of our spirituality when it comes to seeing the things of God. How many want to see things more in the Spirit, in Jesus' name? And when you look all throughout the New Testament, one of the signs of the Messiah coming is when eyesight and blindness are being healed. Remember that story, John the Baptist, in Luke 7, verse 20. When the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the, are you the coming one? Or do we look for another? At that very hour, talking about Jesus, he cured many of infirmities, afflictions, evil spirits. And to many blind, he gave sight. 
Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers cleanse, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he who is not offended in me. If you remember the story, John at this point was now in prison. He was going through a tough time in life. How many have gone through a tough time in life? Yes. How many have been through some things that you just want to forget in your past? And things that you'd rather not remember at all and say, you know what? I covered that by the blood of the Lamb. And I believe Jesus has done that a little while ago when we were in His presence. Yes. Amen? Cost you to forget. And here John... While he was in prison, his eyes began to be clouded by his suffering. He was in jail, seemingly forgotten. When he himself actually said, I must decrease that Jesus might increase. But now when he's in jail, when he's going through, through it, he can't see too good spiritually. See, we, that all applies to us because what happens is our sufferings has, have the tendency to cloud our, cloud our spiritual perception. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know what we speak in the mountaintop when God was moving a while ago and says, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how many felt that your faith yeah. was lifted up all collectively? Our faith was high. Our expectation was high. But when you come down to earth and it's just you and God sometimes and, and now life happens. Right. And you got bills to pay and your relationships are frayed and whatever it is you have to go through, don't allow your circumstances uh, to blind your eyes uh, to just the immediate things that are happening. Uh, let your faith uh, Cure your spiritual eyesight uh, that you may see the angel of the Lord uh, right. and you may see the power of God that has been yeah. continually sustaining you yeah. and covering you in the name right. uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, Sister right. Terry, I agree with you in your prayers. God uh, answers your prayers. How many want to agree yeah. Yeah. with our sister yeah. whether you yeah. know what it is or not? Uh, just agree in yeah. faith that God's going to answer her. Hallelujah. See, suffering and hardships has a, a way of clouding our spiritual senses when your physical senses are being buffeted. Because we live in the physical most of the time. Right? We, we, we take a vacation when we, we are in the presence of God. Do you know that? Every time Psalm Starburst comes and, and the presence of God comes in and you flow with that, mm -hmm. I pray all of us flow with that because you can't miss out on that. Yeah. That's so good. But when you flow in that, that you leave this place. Yeah. You leave this temporary place. You're in a higher place. And that's a vacation for your senses, a vacation for your soul. There's no worry there. It's just bliss because it's a taste of heaven, see? Yeah. It really is. Because heaven is what it is. Because God is there. And when God shows up in a service and you plug in, time stands still. Anybody want to guess how long we worshiped this morning? It was more than an hour. Did it seem more than an hour? No. Or if you didn't plug in, it seemed more than two hours. You look around. You're like, you're missing out. It was so beautiful. Because it is a vacation for your soul. Okay. The psalmist call it a selah, a pause. That's what it means. A selah. Amen. And when God lifts you up into heavenly places, you're transformed from this temporary life to where you're going when you get to heaven. And you taste and see that the Lord, He is wonderful. He is good. Amen. Yeah. The challenge is we don't live there all the time. And it's a choice. Yeah. It, it, it's, it, you're shortchanging yourself when the presence of God moves and you can't plug in because where else are you going to plug in? Uh -huh. By yourself? It's harder to plug in when you're by yourself. Right. Right. Amen? Yeah. 
Because when we join together, our faith collectively yeah. lifts us up. Yeah. One yeah. can put a thousand to flight, two oh. can put ten right. thousand. Right. There is a yeah. multiplicity that happens in the house of God. Yeah. But when Monday comes and here you are, reality says it. Now you have a choice whether to go back to what you were, uh -huh. your same old thinking, or you say, God, I want a brand new set of eyes. Yeah. Brand right. new. Yeah. I want to see differently, Lord. Yes. I want to sense differently, God. Yes. And if you pray that prayer, God will allow you to see things differently. And your reality will begin to change. Amen. You know, we had so much fun. Um, and and uh, I had to qualify fun uh, going up. Uh, Black Star Canyon Falls. There were two ladies that were very smart, actually three ladies that were very smart, uh, that, that did plan to go and they read up. Uh, one lady, so smart, she read up uh, what it was. It was gonna take four to six hours hike, uh, climbing rocks. He goes, you know what? I'm sleeping in. <laughs> she was very smart. Actually, there's another man too that was very smart. He goes, you know what? I know what the reality. He said, this body don't like. <laughs> Very smart. And then there was two ladies, they tried it, I admired their courage, and, and as we got to the sign there, that here's where the trail starts, uh, they said, you know what? Uh, you go on ahead, <laughs> and we'll go back. We, we've done our hike. <laughs> you know, frankly, I, I felt the same way. I, I, I go, my God, just getting to the start of the trail, this is like, it's an, almost an hour hike. And I go, my Lord, what is this? I looked it up later on. It's actually only a point eight of a mile from the trail all the way to the waterfalls. Did you know? It's not much. But it took about two and a half hours to get there. Because you literally have to climb. You're climbing through rocks, boulders. You know, you, I'm beginning to think. Who planned this thing? <laughs> Unfortunately, it was me. And at some point, I, I was, everybody you know that's coming down, because there's people going up and people going down. And people coming down, they have good intentions, and, and they're, 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 you know, they're trying to encourage people that are going up and says, oh, you're almost there, man. Oh, t t just around the bend. Just t ten, five more minutes. And, uh, 30 minutes go by. There's bend after bend. I go, I go, my God. You know, I almost gave up and I said, you know what? There's a 20 foot waterfall right here. Because the first one, I don't know if you know this, but some of you are so tired. You didn't see it. It's right there. I took a picture of it. I almost said to myself, you know what? I'm good. Man, I've seen so many waterfalls in my lifetime. I don't need to climb this thing. But all the group was saying, let's go. Come on, let's go, Pastor. Let's go. So here I am. I'm dehydrated. My legs are hurting. But I had to tune out the physical realm and get in tune with the mind and of the spirit so the suffering doesn't get in the way of reaching the goal and looking up to the mountain. No wonder Jesus, after he fed the 5,000, the Bible says he climbed the side of the mountain and many people did not go. But those that went with him they were able to hear the teachings of the Beatitudes. Amen. Amen. They were very fortunate. Why? Because they climbed. You know what? It was worth I was glad I didn't get I was glad I had brothers and sisters. I rested, sat on a rock, Brother JC. I found me a smooth rock just about my height. And I could lean on and take my foot off the ground. And I almost wanted to say, you're just going ahead, I'll catch up. <laughs> I had no plans of catching up. He goes, I will wait, we'll rest with you. So they rested there. And I go, I guess I can't get, get this guy's off my back. I guess I'm going to have to go with them. But you know what? It was worth it. Amen. Those pictures don't do justice. It was so worth it. And you know what else? Brother G told Brother Paul and I, thank you for taking me here. 
He was so happy, he didn't know he was the one who took me there <laughs> because of his strength. <laughs> you know, I, got, I had two kids, and I had my two kids, you know, they, they, they think, they don't prepare for anything because they, they rely on me. You know, they just say, we'll just show up. And so I have to think through what will they need. You know, it's really a type of Jesus providing for us because yeah. he is our Heavenly Father. And they just want to have fun. So, so in my backpack, I got three big bottles of water that was half frozen and half liquid. I don't know how, I don't know how, how heavy was it, Brother Gene? Because Brother Gene was so kind that uh, to where I was only giving up, I said, you know what? I took my backpack off and Sister Rachel, of course, you know, said, do you want me to carry it? You can't let a girl carry it. <laughs> Come on. So thank God Brother Gene rescued me, put it on his back, and he carried it all the way. That backpack got heavier and heavier. You know what? That's like life sometimes. You know, you start walking and you get a backpack in life and 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 when it's when it's flat, you're alright. But when it starts getting inclined, you got to take exert more effort to pull yourself. That whatever you're carrying gets heavier and heavier. No wonder the Bible says, lay aside things that you don't need. You don't need worry, let it aside. You don't need doubt, lay it aside. Just keep walking with Jesus Christ. Sometimes you have to pull yourself up. But really it's the Lord that's lifting you up. It's the Lord that's doing it. Hallelujah. There, there, there is this, this one area where there's a big boulder here and another big boulder up to here. So imagine it's right here and you got to climb there. Now, that won't be much if you just started. But after two hours of this, this is like, I can't do it. But there's a rope. They actually, somebody actually thought, oh, let's make a rope. So there's a rope there. And, and the first guy that, because there's people going up, the first guy, you know, standing there, he goes, I go, go ahead. <laughs> so he went. I wanted to see what happens to him when he actually climbs. <laughs> so he gets up, nobody on the side. He swings to the right and falls down into the wall. I said, no. As he gets up, I said, hold that rope towards here. The pastor and me was just coming out. I was just ordering everybody what to do. I don't even know. Them. Hold it over there. And here, you you hold it here. Don't let it go. Hold it over here because I don't want to fall down that way. And Brother Gene eventually, I think, I don't know if you, you, you took it, but I was able to pull myself. And see, I was thinking, you know what? Sometimes it requires... All of us together Amen. to help one another. When the Spirit of God's moving, if you're full and you've got your answers already, your prayers, your, you, you go to somebody, you help them. You go to somebody, you give them an encouraging word. God has your back. God will pull you up. God will not leave you behind the road of life. You're going to make it. You're going to ascend. You're going to make it to the top in Jesus. And we have to remind ourselves of our past experiences. So that God and our brothers and sisters is able to be capitalized in reaching the goal that God wants us to reach. See, I climbed Mount Whitney. And I thought in my mind, man, Mount Whitney was 15,600 feet. It is the highest peak in the United States. You know, so when you ride a plane and, oh, we'll reach our cruising altitude of 30,000 feet. We're right now at 15,000 feet. That's, that's how high my Whitney is. I mean, it took me all day. And I made it. So I was looking at this mountain. This is nothing. It's a walk in the park. But I didn't remember. That was like 25 years ago when I actually climbed my Whitney. I was, you know, 30 pounds lighter. And man, it's full of muscle. <laughs> Now, my son goes, oh, look at my six-pack. He's flexing in the muscle. I go, look, look at my cake pack. <laughs> you got nothing on my cake pack. 
And we gotta we gotta remember, see, John in John chapter one verse thirty, he forgot his his supernatural experience in God. See, John did not know that Jesus was the Messiah. And, and it was told to him there was a man coming after him who's greater than him, existed before him, that John wasn't even qualified to lose the latch of his sin. Right. This is how great Jesus is. That John, the greatest prophet, the Bible says, in the New and Old Testament, was not even qualified right. to just lose his sin. Does that illustrate the greatness of the God that we serve or not? Amen. I mean, it does not require any skill going to college to lose a sandal. God is so great, though, that the greatest prophet, amen, in the New and Old Testament is not even qualified. And so he did not know, but John testified in verse 32 that he saw the Holy Spirit descend like a dove from heaven. Resting upon him. Verse 33. I didn't know. This is John speaking. But when God sent me to baptize with water. He told me the one on whom you see. The spirit descend and rest. Is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Right, right. Nobody else saw this. Right. John. John was the only one who saw it. In fact some people heard thunders. They didn't ever see. This is not. A illustration of a triune God. No, it's not. There's only one God. Oh God. Amen. This was a sign from heaven just for John. Right, right. Because he did not know that his first cousin was God in flesh. Yes, yes. Can you think about your first cousin right now? You got a first cousin you think about? How would you be, can be able to be convinced uh, that your first cousin that you grew up with, uh, that you made mistakes with, cut up with, uh, is actually God in the flesh? Most of us would not believe that. I think about my first cousins right now. My, it'll require an act of God for me to believe that they're actually even just a prophet. Much less the son of God. A uh, God himself in the flesh. So this was for John. But see, when life began to happen, he forgot this supernatural experience. When he was in prison, forgotten. His perception got cloud, got clouded by hard circumstances. We've got to resist the urge. Do not allow your hardships. Do not allow your trials. Do not allow the circumstances in your life, uh, things happening or not happening, to cloud uh, your perception of reality that God is still in charge. That God is still on the throne. He has not lost control of your life. Uh, God is still God. He still sits on the throne. That is the reality in Jesus name. See we paint our own reality by our perception and what you perceive becomes your reality. Right. Amen? Amen. And that's a challenge because really our comprehension is at best very limited. We don't know everything. 1 Corinthians 3, 13, 12 now we see things imperfectly as in a cloudy mirror but when we will see everything with perfect clarity, all that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely, just as God knows me completely. That's on the other side when we get to heaven. Yeah. You'll be able to fully understand. That's where we need the gift of discernment. You can't go through life just figuring things out on your own, on your own experiences, on your own intellect. You got to pray, God, let me see through your eyes. Lord, give me the gift of discernment, oh God. Somebody pray that right now. If you're facing situations that are bigger than you, you need the wisdom of God. I said, you need the wisdom of God. You need the wisdom of the Lord. Ask Him right now, God. I can't figure this out. It is beyond me, O oh Lord. I need the Holy Ghost. Would you, O oh God, give me wisdom in Jesus' name? Somebody lift up your hands. 
Hallelujah. When you begin to receive the wisdom that comes from above to figure things out, answers from heaven. Ask for wisdom from God in situations that you are facing. He wants to give you wisdom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we know that? Because James 1 5 says so. If you need wisdom, ask. Our generous God. How many of you have come to know Him to be generous? Amen. Has He been generous to you? Have you received things you did not deserve? Have you received love? Have you received mercy? Have you received answers to your prayers? Even when you don't believe? Amen. And even when you realize you did not deserve it? But here's our generous God. He is loving. He is kind. And He will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask Him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that's blown and tossed by the wind. Right. See, our perception paints our reality, although it may not be, because we over-exaggerate the negative, right? We really do. I mean, it's, it's easier to do that because of circumstances and how we are. We're, we're fallen in nature. Over exaggerate the negative when we undervalue the positive. Right? When something happens, something good, sometimes we're skeptical. How long is this going to last? Is this really for me? Did the boss really give me a raise? You know, am I really healed? Right. Did God really answer my prayer? That's where you got to let the Holy Ghost uh, give you divine wisdom. Uh, that when God does it, He doesn't change His mind. Uh, amen. You possess it by your faith. Uh, if He's healed you, you are healed. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, you got to undervalue the negative. You got to work hard on that because that's our tendency. We overinflate the negative. When I was walking at the height, my God, my hips started hurting for the mark, and I'm not even as old as you. I'm kidding. I mean, it started hurting. I got dizzy because I jumped. Through. What, what? I look at this one boulder. It's about five feet down. And you got to put the foot right there. You know, my mind starts calculating. Put my foot there. Grab your area, and you jump. I was so tired, you know what? Let's get a jump. I jump. <laughs> but I bent down, lift up my head. I got dizzy. I go, oh no. I got to rest now. Got my water poured on my head. You know, look at me and are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm all right. See, if I said no, it's just going to magnify my situation. I've learned long enough, your brain will help you what you feel. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. If you feel bad, and you tell your brain, how oh, do that? Man, your, your calves are aching. Do you feel the blister on your right toe? Do you feel the pain every time you walk? And then if you, the more you think about that, the more it gets magnified. Well, thank God Brother Gene was there with me, just strolling along. And we talk about anything but the pain <laughs> that I'm feeling. And he was so gracious to just indulge me in everything that I could think of. We talk about the Philippines and back to the United States. Uh, we talk about jobs, talk about family. And then Brother Paul comes along. You know, I, I, at first I go, is everything all right? Because he was ahead of me. And he came back. He goes, no, I just want to make sure you're all right. <laughs> And so here we are, three of us strolling, when we talk about outreach, and, 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 and finally, you know, we got to the start where the trail begins, and it's not a mountain climbing anymore, it's, 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 it's a flat road. And I go, oh, thank the Lord. I love flat roads. But then that flat road just came on and on. I go, I don't remember anything this far. I told Brother Paul, where is the car? Where is this place? 
And I tried to distract myself, talk to them about everything else. We, we planned outreach. We planned his life. We planned Jesus' life. We planned all out of things just to get your mind off of the pain. And finally, I saw the pain. Hallelujah. And then he asked me, where's your car? I said, it's beyond the yellow road sign. And he goes, yeah, but how far be you? <laughs> Thank you for being with me. Yeah. Thank God some of them had the sense uh, to see us. Uh, they jumped in my car and got picked me up. <laughs> Thank the Lord. You know, I learned one thing, that you can tune out the pain. Amen. Yeah. You really can. Your mind will either magnify your reality that will drag you down and make it more painful or your mind could lock into the things of the spirit that transcends physical realms and begins to tune out the pain because what you speak and what you think about will just minimize the temporary things in life. It really does. Hallelujah. See, I knew that. But sometimes doing it was another thing. I did that when I climbed Mount Whitney. Brother Tannehill is uh, his sister Couchman's uh, son-in-law. He's gone wayward, but still praying for him. But this was 25 years ago. Back there was no internet yet. 25 years ago. Did you know that? Man, I feel so old. <laughs> there was hardly any cell phones. I don't think it was. But there was, but it was so expensive. It was so heavy. And I asked him, I said, what, what's this hike? He goes, oh, man, it's a walk in the park. I'm like, okay. So I, my backpack, with a jean, thank God, he went there. My backpack was 30 or 40 pounds. I had canned goods. I had food. I had water. I had a cooking utensil. I had a gas burner. And the first mile, I told him, I'm turning back. I'm not going to make this. He goes, no, man, we got to do this. I go, oh, I can't make it. And big old brother Jim, remember Jim Johnson? Jim Johnson says, I'll carry your, your backpack. I go, okay. He carries my backpack. His was 10 pounds. I carry his. He puts it on. He goes, what do you have here, rocks? <laughs> and the only reason I made it up to the mountain, 15,600 feet. And that's, that's, that's a long one. The only reason, two things, I was able to tune out my fears. Right. And I was able to minimize the reality that I'm in. Because after a while, we walked for maybe 12 hours just to get to the base. This is another four to get to the summit. That's a long time. And the only reason why I was able to do that, how uh, this great invention called the Walkman. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, the old people say. Amen. Yeah. Walkman, where you had those, you know, those earphones, and it's got wires, and there's, there's a cassette, and you play it. You got all my gospel songs. I listened to all of that one tape over and over again. One one time, Brother Paul, there was a band, and then these people say, oh, there's they bend one more time, I'll bend you in Jesus. <laughs> and I stopped on my tracks and I thought there was a bear. It looked like a bear. And I go, oh Lord, I'm dead now. I froze until somebody walking down the trail, go, it can't be a bear because they walked past it. It was a dead log. See, your, your mind will exaggerate the negative things. Right? right? That could have easily been an in and out food truck. <laughs> Why didn't I think about that? <laughs> right? In fact, we were kidding with some people. Oh, when you get up there, there was in and out. <laughs> yeah, there's in and out. You go in, and you go back out. <laughs> <laughs> How about we make up our mind? We're going to minimize the negative. 
Would you do that in Jesus' name? We're going to minimize uh, the negativity in life uh, and even the reality of life because God is greater than our reality and God is greater than negative yeah. things in life uh, and God is able to lift us up uh, in heavenly places for He knows all things uh, and He beholds all things. Uh, so I'm just going to trust in You, Lord, uh, as I keep on walking on this trail of life, oh God, uh, knowing that at times You carry me, oh Lord, uh, in the name of Jesus yeah. Christ. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. I was kidding with Brother Paul one time ago. You want to carry me? He goes, come on, piggyback right. Well, I don't want to do that. But Psalms 139 verse 1. Oh Lord, you have examined my heart. And know everything about me. Do you realize God knows everything about each and every one of us? Yes, and He loves us. He calls. He called all of us. He chose every one of us. Verse 2, you know when I sit down or stand up, you know my thoughts even when I'm far away. When I'm going out of the way and focus on the negativity of life, God's still there. He hasn't abandoned you. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything that I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. Yes. That's how powerful God is. Before the words leave your mouth, God knows about it before that. Amen. You go before me and follow me. That's somebody that's in love with you. Yes. He yes. follows you. Thank you, you know, we follow each and every one of us. Brother Kissy. Dana and Jess going down. They were so tired of following the trail. They said, we're just going to go through the water. They just went through the water. At first I go, I don't know if that's a smart move. But I said, you know, I pray for all of them. When I, the first challenging rock, and I see my little boy hopping. <laughs> From boulder to boulder. First I yell, hey! Everybody there, just people there to go, what? Not you, him. No! Stop that! Now, I was fearful. Because one slip, you didn't have to call 911 and get airlifted. He's, he's just enjoying himself. I said, you know what, Lord, you're going to have to cover all of us here. And then Dana and, and, and Jess decided, you know what, we're just going to wade through the water and go right down there, just follow the creek, wait sometimes up to the chest, and they're wading down, and they're just having their time in their life. And Brother Gene, who is very protective, thank God for you, Brother Gene, very protective, he'll watch them, make sure they're okay, you know. Yeah, I, I got to confess, when I, got, when I get tired, I, I get my, my old flesh gets kicks in and become this person that I didn't like when before I start walking. When I get tired, the, the trail's like this. I'm tired. Somebody coming. You move. I'm not moving. Go around. Or sit right there. Someone's going, someone, excuse me. I go, yeah. You are an excuse. And I had to catch myself. Lord, I know I'm tired and cranky right now, but I don't want to. I want to be a witness up here too. I don't want. I don't want to lose the Holy Ghost. Oh God! But well, I'm like, you know what? I'm not moving. You move. I don't care how big you are. Move. <laughs> in fact, there, there's these two kids, and they're looking at Brother Gene because he's under the waterfalls. <laughs> he's so cold. I mean, the water's so cold because the snowpack's melting, right? And my, my feet was swelling, and, and I convinced Brother Paul, hey, let's take off our shoes and, and dip our feet into this water so the swelling will stop. Yeah. But see, if you dip it long enough, you lose senses of your toes that you're not sure if they're there. <laughs> and I said, well, let's just dip our heel because that's what usually swells. And, and Brother Paul and I were, you know, it's, just enjoying it. And these two kids and Brother Gene's entered the water. Ah, you saw it. I mean, he's angry. It's freezing. We're convincing everybody. And these two young kids, they go, go ahead. Where's your camera? We'll take your picture. This not that. Go, go, back, go. Come on, back. Or the back and I'm back. Where's your picture? And I think Brother Gene took their picture. 
And, and I was kidding with him. Oh, he was off. Go back. <laughs> Camera was off. He go, no. But we had a great time. And, and, and see, even the cold, you could tune in. Because I was soaking my heel for, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes maybe. And after a while, I felt really good. Yeah. The first contact, you take your foot out. The first, you know, I took my shoes off and you're walking, you know, when you're not used to walking barefoot, even the small pebbles are so painful. And Brother Paul and I are like, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> a bunch of old men, you know, we only need a cane. But even after that, of, of stepping on it for a while, you, you could tune it out. You could tune, you know, you read about the story of the Holocaust and those that survived. You know how it is, you're right, they tuned it out. Yeah. It's amazing what the human body can endure. This one, I forget his name now, this one guy that was in a Holocaust, and he's, he's in a cage uh, that you could, not, you could only stand, not fully erect to alleviate your back. Uh, it's just it's horrendous. But every day he would imagine himself going to an 18-hole golf course. Wow. That's how he spent his day. He would line up. It looked. I'm sorry, that was my saliva, that's all right. <laughs> and he would do that for hours. And it begs the reason that the Bible repeats itself over and over again. That God knows everything. Right. And in verse 6 it says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. When you realize you're in the hands of an ever-powerful God that knows everything. That is above your reality and above your pain. That when you look to Jesus in circumstances that is beyond you. That He is your ever-present help. That He is your comforter. That He is the one. He is your anesthesia. Ever been under anesthesia? I have one time and I don't want to do it again. Right. Amen? Amen. Yeah. I had surgery of my nose. I had septoplasty. They broke my nose, grinded the bones, cut the turbinates. I mean, it was a wonderful thing. <laughs> Being physicians. <laughs> but even that, I believe God could move upon you in such a way you don't feel the pain. Yeah. You've been doing what I'm talking about. You're in the Holy yeah. Ghost, you're worshiping, and you fall, mm -hmm. and you don't feel the pain. Yes. Why is that? Because God knows everything. Mm -hmm. He's beyond this realm. Amen? Right. If you never experienced that, experience it. Yeah. I've done some, man, I've ran the aisle. I've missed my turn. I've crashed into the wall. I've broken some chairs, uh, crashing into it, running. I've hit my head on the, the leg of a piano. I never once felt pain in the Holy Ghost. Amen. No wonder when Stephen was stoned to death, remember that? Uh, he was stoned to death. Uh, he did not feel pain. He said, Lord, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. He said, I see the Son of Man on his throne coming with his angels. What's happening? He was transported from the temporary painful life experiences in the higher realm of the Holy Ghost. Anybody want that? That is for you. That is for me. Psalms 121, I'm hurrying. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. Yeah. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven yeah. and earth. He will not allow my foot to be moved. He, will, he who keeps you will not slumber. Thank you. Thank you. If you do go to Black Star Canyon Falls, there is a disclaimer. It is a if you slip, you can fall, you can break some bones, you might be brought to the hospital. I tried to minimize that when I was research, researching it. I said, you know, oh, come on, how, how dangerous could it be if it's dangerous to close this to the public? But it is dangerous. And I was leaning on the scripture, he'll not allow your foot to be moved. Because, you know, the more tired you get, the more risks. 
And the more you calculate it incorrectly, because of your tiredness, you take unnecessary risks. And that's when people get hurt, because they're not engaged. And I was thinking about that. How does that apply to the Holy Ghost? Oh, man. You put on the mind of Christ. Amen. Especially when you're tired. Amen. You don't rely on your own intellect. You don't rely on your own ingenuity. You renew your mind. You ask for wisdom. Amen. You walk in the Spirit. In God, the Bible says, you order your steps. You will not slip. That's what he's talking about. When you're climbing the mountain. Why? We know it's a mountain because verse 1 talks about the hills. He's climbing a mountain. He'll not let you slip. Thank the Lord. He keeps you. He doesn't go to sleep. The Lord is your keeper. Verse 5. Verse 7. The Lord preserved you from all evil. The, verse 8. He's going to preserve you forever. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. See, you have authority. When it comes to what you see and what you don't see. Mm. Second Kings 6 verse 15. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth. 6.15 please. I'm jumping. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth. Behold an host come past the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Elisha's servant, Gehazi, majored in what we all majored, the negativity. All he saw was the negative. They were surrounded by the Syrian army. And he told Elisha, We're done. What shall we do? Alas, we're finished. There's no hope. I'm so glad when I was walking, none of them said, you know what? It hurts, huh? Your calves hurt. It burns, doesn't it? None of them understood that. They knew. You know, when you're walking like this, you, man, it's not because you're old, you're in pain. <laughs> and see, the best thing we could do for each other sometimes is not to bring them back to the reality they're facing, but to lift their faith up. Amen. Yeah, you can acknowledge what they're going through by minimizing. If all they want to have is a pity party, let them celebrate it all by themselves. Right. Don't attend. Right. Don't RSVP. I'm busy that day. I'm not coming to your pity party. If you, after you moan and groan, we'll talk. We'll lift you up in heavenly places because we've got to resist the urge to focus on the negative. Get his eye. He focused. He, I, I guess it's, it's normal. I don't know if you're, there's only two of you and you've got an army surrounding you. You'll probably think, okay, well, we're, we're dead. Not if you're with God. You might be outnumbered physically, but when God shows up, Amen. you're always the majority. Yeah. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said when God shows up in your life, you have the advantage. You have the upper hand. When Jesus shows up, the dead could rise. The, the lame could walk. The blind could see again. The deaf could hear. When Jesus shows up in our lives, we're always on top. Thank God Elisha had practiced all his life not to see the physical but the spiritual. They're surrounded. Could you picture it? They get out of their little shack and they're surrounded by all the, the army, the Syrian army. Two against thousands with spears and bows and horses. And his servant so fearful. Oh, his feet were knocking. Oh, alas, master, what shall we do? And Elisha, I love it. Verse 16, he answered, fear not. When somebody tells you don't be afraid, don't, don't minimize that. That's from the Lord. That word, fear not, is repeated over and over again in Scripture because fear has a 
way of paralyzing your faith and bringing you to the realm of the natural. Oh, fear is a natural emotion. I beg to differ. Where did that come from? Adam had no fear in the garden before sin. Eve had no fear. Fear sets in when they sin. It's not from God. It's from the devil. The temptation that came as a result. So don't fear. Well, I don't know if I can do that. Yeah, you can. You really can. Oh, I don't know. You know, the best you can do, if, you, if you're fearful, just don't express it. Don't express it. They say if you're attacked by a bear, don't show your fear. If you're attacked by a lion, hold your ground. Like David, he slew a bear, he slew a lion. And here you are so fearful. Why? Why are you so fearful? You know why? You've developed the habit. And you let your words follow. The first thing you need to stop is your words. That makes sense? Because it's one thing to think about it, it's another thing to express it. Yeah. When you express it with your words, it leaves an imprint in your yeah. mind that that is a finality, that that is a reality. Yeah. But if you speak otherwise, yeah, you know what, but God is faithful. Yeah. Oh, I'm here, but you know what, God's going to bring me out of this. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what to do, but He knows everything. Yeah. And He'll make a way when there seems to be no way. Yeah. Even when the temptation, there's a way of escape uh, that I might be able to bear. So he answered him, fear not. I could, I could almost see him yell. I, I, it's just me. I, I could see him putting a, a, a handlock on his neck and choking him. Fear not. I don't know. Your imagination is as good as me. You could, I don't know how you read your Bible. I read it in real life. I read it in dire circumstances. I, didn't, I don't think he's an old wolf. You know, you read your Bible so, so, so eloquent and so formal. Oh, peace be with you. No, Jesus, yell. I'm not advocating yelling. But sometimes you need to yell. Amen. In the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. Amen. One time I was driving with my friend. We're driving after church. Amen. And I'm mean, just talking. I mean, had a good time at church. And he tells me, red, red light. I didn't hear it. I was driving. Here. He goes, red light. The third time he said, red light. Then I saw it slam on my brakes. I'm in the middle of the road and back up. I looked at him. I said, what did you say? He said, I did three times. I go, yeah! <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> Good friend. <laughs> you know, he's just like, red light. Dude, we're going to get T-boned here. We're not talking about a meal. And he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Do you think he whispered that? Or did he say it emphatically with conviction? Because he sees through the eyes of the Spirit. He's not just proclaiming faith out of nowhere, but he has made a lifestyle of seeing the supernatural and sensing the hand of God, even especially in dire circumstances. Amen. And he said, fear not. They that be with us are more than those that be against us. Amen. Poor he is up. He goes, where? Well, Still fearful. See, if you can't see the spiritual, you'll remain fearful. Yeah. Aren't you tired of being fearful? Mm -hmm. I've never been one to be fearful. And that's, I guess, both good and bad. I've never been one to be fearful. I've taken a lot of risks in my life. Some of them I think, I, I prayed I didn't, but I did. But some of them have paid off really good. Mm -hmm. Especially in business. Take some risks. Weigh the rewards. Don't jump out of it blindly. And don't get, let the Holy Ghost lead you. And he hears that and goes, where? I don't see. Who's for us? Oh, I see Syrian army. And just what we should do, we should pray. Amen. 
Verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. That's what God wants to tell us today. This is the crux of the message. If, if you would make this a habit to see beyond the superficial, right. the temporary, to see God in every circumstance of your life. Let me say that again. That's a word from God for all of us. That you see God in every, some say in every, every. not some. Oh. You see God in every circumstance in your life. You see Him. He's there. Yes. Ever present. Right. Ever concerned. Ever loving. Come on. Not tired of your mistakes. Yeah. See, as you weigh yourself with what you did good and what you did bad, God has always been there. He knows your mistakes sure. before you make it. That's right. That's right. Amen. And he's called you despite those mistakes. Don't let the devil beat you down. Yeah. Don't let fear paralyze you. Pray, Lord, open my eyes yes. that I may see. Yes. And the Bible records, and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. Amen. And behold, behold means to look intently, to examine us as with a microscope, to behold. See, you can glance casually what God's doing, or you could really pay attention. Right. If you just glance, oh, that's nice, God. Thank you for blessing me. And just walk along. You jump through the boulder. I feel good, brother. I feel good in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, when you're in the Holy Ghost, you don't feel no pain. I feel it in wrong. I felt it waking up this morning, going down the stairs. And going, my iPad in one hand, and, and I take my phone, I'm putting my elbow on the, the rail, sliding down. When, when you're under... How many of you know what I'm talking about? You're under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The physical senses and the realm, they, they, they're just they're immaterial. Huh? Because we're not meant to live forever in this natural realm. Huh? God lifts us up huh, in heavenly places with Him huh, that we may sit a while huh, and look a while and behold. See, there's a whole new unexplored territory of the spiritual that you and I have not even began to explore and tap into. Amen. We're so locked in whatever we're going through. Hmm. Oh, my car. Oh, my job. Oh, my calf. My thighs. My hips. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and we go through life just hey, hey. Well, there's a higher realm. Higher realm. And sure, you and I should explain. Yeah. Because the reality is, the Bible says, the Lord encampeth what? Wrong about them. That fear him or respect him. See, this is not just a one-time experience for this prophet and his servant. This is for you and I. The Bible says the angels of the Lord. I feel them right now. They're, they're surrounding all of us. They're, they're on guard. They're on attention. They're ready to protect, ready to open doors, ready Amen. that your eyes will be healed. Right. And you can see. Would you stand with me? I feel the Holy Ghost in our eyes. I feel the Holy Ghost in our eyes. You behold, you look intently, you explore the reality of the realm of the supernatural in you. When you wake up in the morning, I pray for your eyes that you begin to see differently, to look beyond the natural circumstances, but to see what God is doing in your life. Behold. 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 The mountain is full of horses, chariots of fire around you. Angels surrounding you as you see through the eyes of the Spirit. The Bible is full of people that have seen through the eyes of the Spirit. Rahab, 
didn't really live an exemplary life. But she saw beyond. She looked at the eyes and through the eyes of the Spirit. Hid the spies. And became part of the lineage of Jesus Christ. From her offspring comes the Messiah. Oh, how wonderful Jesus is. How loving, how gracious that he would choose a harlot that he would be part of that lineage. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you're generous and kind. Joshua and Caleb through the eye, through, saw through the eyes of the Spirit. They only waited for 40 years to finally receive their promise, yet they never gave up. They kept walking, they kept hiking through the hot desert. Surrounded by people that did not believe. Yet they kept a good attitude. Caleb, when he was 80 years old, he said, give me my mountain. I'm as strong now as I was then. Give me my mountain. He looked through the eyes of the Spirit. Hallelujah. This morning, God wants you and he will give it to you. To be able to see through the eyes of the Spirit. Would you come right now? Would you bring somebody with you? Would you convince them to walk down through this aisle and to this altar and not be afraid and not be hesitant because it is for all of us to come and say, God, I want the eyes. I want the eyes that could see through the eyes of the Spirit. The Lord God, my reality no longer has a hold.